How's it going? Right, okay, so today on the agenda, on the menu for today is going to be, um, I'm going to finish off the side mount, um, I think that's going to work out okay, um, and probably going to try and, uh, once I've finished the side mount, carry on with some electrical stuff, I've still got to get the indicators wired in, uh, which shouldn't be too, too much hassle, hopefully. Um, get the brake light then wired in so we've got all working lights all the way around um, I've got a tiny issue with the horn which I need to troubleshoot um, which I'll come on to and I need to work out where I'm going to mount the rear indicators and finish off mounting up the rear mud guard little it's very little tiddly bits but um, I want to kind of get those straight once that's done um, Need to refit the tank. Now, when I did a test fit the other day, I put the tank on, and it was just a bit too close to the um, to when the yoke was on when the the, the your yoke or your triple trees on full lock. I mean, I always had about probably that much clearance between the edge of the yoke on full lock and the tank, and um, for some reason it was all in exactly the same place, and it was like really close. It was like about that much distance which I'm a little bit too close for comfort I'm not really sure how how that's really happened because it wasn't doing it before <laughs> um, so yeah I need to have a look at that that was late at night and um, I couldn't be bothered looking at it so there might be some kind of tweaking I've got to do with the tank to get that to fit again or at least satisfactory I'm pretty sure it never came that close on lock I mean it was close-ish but not super close anyway so that's another thing we've got to do um, but I think once indicators brake light seat needs to be recovered but I have got the other seat to cover me you know to get it on the road I'd like to fabricate fab up some front mud guard mounts and do something with the front mud guard as well um, but other than that it will then be kind of pretty close for a test ride which is pretty cool and the timing, hopefully, if everything goes well, is pretty good because I got a email from Joe at Fenlon Choppers, and um, the hardtail frame section's done. Um, I had a picture of that and a picture of it on the jig. He's used his own Hinkley Bonneville frame or a spare frame he had um, as the jig. So um, I'll put those pictures up now. Actually, show you the work in progress. Little teaser shot, um, but we should be looking at. Um, about a week. They, he's moving premises at the moment, so it's again this delayed things. But like I said, I'm not in any rush at the moment because I need to get this finished. It's it's fine. So um, yeah, um, let me stick up some hardtail pictures for you now, so you can have a little bit of a look. So that's really coming along. I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be exciting. Um, so I've got to get this one finished and get it done and uh, get back out, have this on the road and clear some space. So um, I've had a bit of a tidy up in here as well, cleared out a load of stuff and sorted a load of things out um, in readiness. But enough of that, let's crack on with the America. Um, First thing we'll do, let's finish off that side mount and see if I can make that work. Well, so a couple of little uh, just smoothing out some modifications. So that's how the uh, side mount's looking. And um, I'll show you how that sits on the bike. There we go, that's it on the bike. So that sits quite nicely. Okay, so here's the, uh, here's the light we've gone for. So we've got the brake light there and the plate light there. I uh, kind of went for it because it was, well, it's exactly the right uh, size to fit on there. Just a little bit of looking. And that was from bikermart.co.uk and that will fit just there. So, quite unobtrusive. So, the plan is I've got two mounting bolts there and obviously the hole for the wires, which relates to those points I've marked out there. And then obviously the plate will sit on there. So it should hopefully be a very neat, tidy kind of unit. So initially I'm just going to concern myself with the, uh, the mounting of the light. As to how that's going to mount to the bracket, I don't think I'm going to just rely on those two uh, bolts to go through there and hold the number plate, kind of back plate on. Um, it'll probably be alright, it's extremely light, but I might um, put in 
just two more and what I'll probably do is put them there and there but countersink them so um, they'll be beneath the light that's the plan anyway right so we're mounted on there it's a little test fit so so far so good so I just need to drill the holes through that side there now and uh, Yes, yeah, it's okay, working. the next stage then. Um, so that's I've just bolted uh, the back plate to that uh, just so I can drill through both. And I'm going to be using some countersink bolts, not sure which length yet. So I'll just mark those out, drill through, countersink them, and then they'll sit flush, hopefully, and then the brake light over the top of them. So you won't see them, they'll be effectively hidden. So, uh, yep, let's uh, crack do the on. Quite nicely. They're sitting nice and flush. So uh, let's get it all bolted up. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. It's turned out okay. Do the job anyway, won't it? So uh, just dismantle it all now, and um, I think it's got to go black, isn't it? So uh, I'll spray that up. Might actually use. I've got a fair bit of the old uh, wrinkle paint. I might, I might do it a nice wrinkle finish. Actually, might even do the speedo mount as well while I'm at it. That's a side mount out of the oven. I've uh, given it the wrinkle finish, and I'm really happy with that. Um, it's turned out really nicely. Um, that's uh, it's a tight wrink wrinkle because um, I managed to get it in the oven at 98 or whatever it was for an hour. Um, so yeah, that's really turned out nicely. So I think. I'm definitely going to do the speedo main as well. Yep. Lovely. There we go, all together. Yeah, I think I'll do the job nicely. It's turned out quite, quite neat. Yeah. Yeah, really, yeah, really happy with that. Yep, decided to do the speedo mount as well, so that's done being done black, just come out of the oven and uh, ready to go on. Okay, so as I mentioned, got a little bit of a problem with the horn, um, that being when the power's on and you press the horn button, nothing happens. Um, so I extended the wiring on that, but what I suspect um, is when I was thinning out the old wiring loom, um, I wonder if, because there was quite a lot of earth wires, I wonder if I've snipped the earth wire for the horn which is a bit of an ask I've wrapped up all the loom now but we need to find out what what it is first um, so we'll have a little look over at the bike and have a little bit of a troubleshooting session right so there's our horn so I've disconnected the two wires uh, from the back of the horn um, these this is the slight extension and that bit there where the bullet crimps are um, or where I extended the wires from. Um, so the first simple test I'm going to do is um, just roughly hook the battery up, put it down, put this down here, and then one of these, which is just like a little tester. You can test if we've got any current, so I'm just going to attach one end of that to uh, a suitable earth point. Somewhere on the frame of the engine, shut some, get some power going. So the bike's got power lights are on. So in theory, these should be live now. Um, and then if I've got power going to both of these, this should light up. So, so straight away, that one isn't lighting up. That one is. I don't know if you can see that on the, on the camera. See that one's lit up. So. Got power going there, but no power going there. In my wisdom, both of these wires are black, so I can't tell exactly just yet until I pull some of this apart. Which one is the? Earth Here wire. we go. Um, this is this is from this point on. I've extended, as I said in my wisdom, I did two black wires, um, but uh, that's not a problem. What I'll probably do is try and just see which ones live out of there um, I 
believe it's the blue and the black one. I think it's very hard to see on here. That's so there's a purple and black stripe and a blue and a black. I think it's the blue and the black, which is the earth. Um, but I'm just going to double check that on the uh, wiring schematic and then um, we can go from there, see which one of those is actually. Yep, so the live. purple and the black is the live, and the blue and the black. Uh, it's definitely going to earth. So I'm um, fingers crossed. It's it's definitely looking that um, I've just been a twat and um, snipped the earth wire. We'll just double check that right now. Right, then, it's got a multimeter out for a bit of the continuity. So I've undone the switch gear. So I've I've start. I'm going from the horn switch, and I'm going to try and find out where things go a bit adrift. So that's the horn switch there with the black and yellow and the white and black wires. So the um, white and black should be going to the live, the purple and black. And I've found now um, that I seem to be okay there. I've got continuity. Uh, let's just see if I can hook this up. So I know you probably can't see this, but <clears throat> um, if, I'm, if I just see if we've got continuity, I'm going to get a beep. So if I just put that on the black and purple wire and then go to the switch to the black and white. There we go, we have continuity there. So the only other point we could have an issue is in the wiring connector from the switch gear to the main loom. So we'll have a little look there next. And then from that point, at the moment, it is suggesting what I initially thought. I've just accidentally snipped the earth wire. Okay, so if we have a look in the uh, switch gear, so switch gear wiring block down to the main loom, we've got the, uh, oops, sorry, one, two, third one up there is the black and the yellow. And that should be going to a earth, which it is. The third one up there is a black wire to earth. And then if we look on, where's the other one? Black and white. Black and white is there. So that's the second one down on the other side. And that is going to, yep, the black, oh, sorry, the black and purple on there. So that's that all makes sense to me. So now if I just disconnect this block, right, so we're just going to double check continuity now on the this bit of wiring, which is just from the switch gear down to here which plugs into the main harness. So the yellow and black is that pin there. Try and do this whilst holding everything. Switch gear. So we definitely got continuity there, and then the white and black, which is that one. Yeah, we definitely got continuity there. So we know all the wiring is good down there. So if we go to the main loom end, and we go to the purple and black. black we have some and if we go to the black earth wire which is third one we have nothing it's gonna be to take so from the main loom going to the horn will be the live wire and then from the horn to a suitable earthing point, whether that turns out to be a good one or that, or I don't know, somewhere on here, just do a separate earth wire to the frame of the bike, and that should hopefully sort the situation. Um, 
which is I'd rather it was neater and it was running into the main loom but um, at this stage I'm not unwrapping all that so it'll have to do I'm a bloody idiot I am gonna have to unwrap the loom and um, this is not where the issue is looking at it again the horn switch from the uh, from the switch gear down to the block that's all fine and our problem is not so much here it's where it comes off the wiring loom block um, which will be that one and coming in and off the earth here so I suspect what's happened is that I'm missing this earth wire here so I'm gonna have to just uh, get in there sort that out and get it all back together again so I'm just gonna spend a bit of time unwrapping stuff and getting it there right let's give it a go so always a uh, double check before you cut a wire on the plus side I've managed to make a tidier job and thin out the not thin it out but just do a tidier job in cleaning all the wiring up there and um, I don't need extensions now I doubt still the original wiring which is nice I think the less m molestation of the wires that you can do the better um, so I haven't had to add anything on so that's uh, I unwrapped it back enough to come back on itself there so um, yeah you know bit of a pain but um, turned out for the better really right the horns working so um, I've put the number plate on so that's uh, that's all on and good so I want to get the wiring done for that so that's obviously not long enough uh, to go uh, uh, up into the loom um, so I'm going to use the old trick of a bit of uh, three core mains cable I'll do the job it's nicely shrouded it's flexible it does the job perfectly so I'm probably just gonna probably solder on the end of those wires sleeve it all and then uh, I'll keep this long until I've decided exactly uh, where it's going to be rooted that's the um, harness for the rear uh, for the rear brakes that plugs into the main loom and off that we have uh, the um, light and indicators um, so I might um, I mean we've got uh, what three seven connections there I wonder if I can put them all together on a no that's only a six way thought I might be able to do it on a block but it um, doesn't look like I'm going to be able to unless I buy one but uh, yep yeah, we'll get to that in a bit anyway let's get on with getting the wire in okay so it's just soldered uh, the wires together there I'm just going to heat shrink these down now and then pull the sleeving back over so that will be nice one neat continuous length um, I've gone for soldering because that will they're not going around any bends, they're not under any stress um, and also that just makes it the same sort of thickness as the wires anyway rather than a load of bulky connectors might keep it nice and clean so yeah rock and roll okay so I seem to be plagued by some electrical gremlins this time round uh, really annoying um, so I've sorted the horn out so I had a bit of issue with the horn that, that's just me being a bit uh, snip happy what well, actually one of the earth wires um, from the horn had come Adrift, so I've had to resold and recrimp that. I didn't do a very good job on that previously, so that that was the reason that wasn't working. So that's all sorted now. Um, so we've moved on to the rear brake light, obviously, um, and I'm having a few issues with that at the moment. Um, so I'll show you what the problem is. Okay, so if we turn on, it's looking all good, lighting up as it should do. Um, now if I pull the front brake on, that's fine. Now the rear brake is not doing anything and at the moment I've got the rear brake light switch disconnected. Um, that's not why it's not doing anything. But if I show you, if I plug that back in, let me go back over. And I put the brake on, so it's the rear brake. Nothing really. Uh, front brake. It's very, it's a little bit glitchy, in it, you know. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. Whether or not I've got a faulty brake switch. 
in here. Yes, it's a bit frustrating. So I've, I've bleeped through literally all the, uh, so where are we, from the rear brake light, all along here down at the fuse box, and that going along there, and um, we've got then from the fuse box to the front and rear brake switches, everything bleeps through absolutely fine. Uh, the only place I'm having issues is uh, here, rear brake switch. That seems to be the problem area. Right, so there we go, so there's our brake switch. So it's just kind of like, we're interested now how this one works actually. So we've just got the, um, the feed pipe that comes from the front. There it is, running along there. That obviously just goes into here. And then we've got a banjo that comes off and goes to the caliper. Uh, there we go, there's the front end of it. Right then, so I'm gonna, gonna test the, the switches, see if it's something to do with the switch. So we know the front brake uh, works, so just got the multimeter onto beep mode, continuity tester. And I'll try and do this with limited hands. So if you just disconnect the wiring, so you've just got the two blade terminals of the switch. When you put the multimeter across it, one on each switch, when the brakes close, you should get continuity, which we do. So I'll apply this to the rear brake and see if we've got the same thing. That's going to be a bit more of a stretch to the pedal. Though. Right, so I've just quickly bodged up a bit of test equipment, if you like. So I've just got a bit of old wire, crimped some spade connectors on there. That goes all the way round, because one thing I really gets my goat sometimes is farting around trying to get a multimeter with a decent connection. So I can just simply pop one of those in each of those. Well that's a bit weird. So that was actually sort of on so that's almost suggesting that that's on completely hang on <laughs> you know what I was saying about farting around with them in multi meters right that would explain it because that seems to be permanently on. Well, I think we found the problem. Um, that's quite nice that it's not actually anything to do with my wiring. Hey, bonus, but um, I'm still going to have to fix it. Okay, so that's kind of brought us to a bit of a grinding halt um, at the end of this weekend's video. Um, I'd really hope to have uh, got the indicators and the rear brake light and everything sort of done. Um, yeah, so close really, I mean if that's sorted it's just the, getting the seat recovered, some front mudguard brackets, um, get the tank on and uh, yeah take it for its first test ride, check what the fueling's like. So I mean it's really really close, it's just these last couple of little gremlins I've got to sort out. Um, so I've got to look into that brake switch, um, yeah really really annoying that, I'm not really even sure how they how they work those ones um, but um, yeah I'll have a little bit of a look now but that is oh, done my head in um, I really want to get this on the road and uh, well hey just to get the bike on the road I'm going crazy not having a bike uh, or not riding anyway uh, and also you know gotta get ready to uh, roll in the uh, the hardtail frame um, so yeah Ugh, never mind it's all a bit of fun in it um, so yeah, that's that's the end of this video. Hopefully, I was hoping to go a bit further, but there you go. Um, still got some nice bits done. Um, thanks for watching. Take it easy. See you next time.